Hi guys, um, it's Erica here from Driven Fitness, hello, and it has been a while since I have been on uh, Facebook Live, but I feel like I haven't had that much to talk about lately, <laughs> so um, I haven't uh, gone live, but um, I thought I would try today um, because uh, probably in the last like two weeks, I've had a couple of different conversations um, with people about gluten and some questions about gluten and the whole gluten controversy. So I thought that it would be a good time to um, go back onto the live Facebook feed, uh, Facebook feed and talk about gluten and what I know about it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And if you um, are here, just say a quick hi, because for some reason, I can't see right now the comments on the bottom of the Facebook Live feed. So um, let's see here. I might have to um, click off and re-click back on again. But if, if you're on um, live, if you could just type a little something like a hello or, or something like that. Let me see if I can, oh, I see it now, cool. Maybe Facebook changed the format of their live feed for me to see. Hi, Julie. Um, so anyway, so we are gonna talk about gluten today, but while we kind of wait for just a couple of minutes for people to come on, I have to tell you, I um, told a couple of my clients over the week that during Thanksgiving, I learned how to make yogurt, Greek yogurt in the crock pot. And it is so good, and I just finished um, my first batch. My mom had the recipe, and it is so yummy and so easy and so much less expensive than buying yogurt in the grocery store. Um, I'm super excited about it. So if you are a yoga person um, and you want a good, wholesome yogurt recipe, I'm going to post it uh, later today. Hopefully I'll remember so that um, you can check it out if you want. It's super easy. And it's good quality, it only uses, you know, natural ingredients. Um, so, yeah, yogurt. Woo! You know, usually I'm not a fan of yogurt because of all the crap in it and the sugar. So, this is a good way, um, if you do like yogurt, to get a healthier version. So, it's a complete sidetracked train of thought, but while we're waiting for people, I wanted to share that. So, okay. Um, we're going to start talking about gluten. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. Usually I try to keep my Facebook lives like about 15 minutes, but there's so much in the gluten controversy and it's super complicated. So we're going to do our best. If you guys have any questions, um, go ahead and type them in while I'm chatting and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. So you guys know I'm not a nutritional therapist. I am not a dietitian, but what I do like to do is just, um, kind of show both sides of the diet and nutrition um, <clears throat> kind of arguments that come for different different fads, different diets that come through the um, the media, so that you at least can make an informed decision about it. Awesome! Hi Kelly. Hi Ken. Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about the five things you need to know about gluten and the gluten controversy. So, what is gluten? And you're going to see me looking over it this way. Um, hi Michael. Uh, thank you. Best to you in 2017 too. Um, because, so you're gonna see me looking this way at my computer because I have to have notes for this one. Um, okay, so first of all, number one, the number one thing you should know, what is gluten? So gluten is a protein that's found in wheat um, and it's what makes doughs elastic and like stick together in that gooey sort of um, way that we love in cakes and cookies. Um, it's found in wheat, it's also found in rye and barley and sometimes oats. So it's a protein, it's found in wheat. Um, what's all the fuss about? Uh, number two thing you should know. What's all the fuss about? So the fuss is whether or not gluten is good for you and whether it's causing damage to our systems. So I think most experts agree that whole grains have a lot of nutrients. They have fiber and minerals and all that stuff is really good for you. Um, the issue is coming with the refined grains. So whole grains, that haven't been refined aren't really the issue. The big issue is the refined stuff that we're eating. So when we refine wheat, we strip away some of its parts and with that, we strip away most of the nutrients that go along with it and then in order to make it taste good, we add fat, sugar, salt, other additives when we're processing them to make them taste good. So 
The issue is that the way wheat products are refined these days, we're using a different strain of wheat than we used to we used to use hundreds of years ago. And this new strain that we're refining has a lot more gluten in it. So the issue is refining the grains, keeping the gluten, and the fact that we have more gluten than we used to in the wheat that we're using. All right, number three. So the pros and cons of the gluten issue. So one side says, Gluten is doing a lot of damage to our systems and we should avoid it pretty much at all costs. The other side is saying, mm, no, not so fast. Unless you have a sensitivity to it, there's really no reason to completely eliminate gluten from the diet. People have been eating wheat and wheat products for in various forms for tens of thousands of years, going way, way back, So, and it hasn't caused any issues before. So that's the main um, argument between the for and against. So the people that are against gluten say that one, gluten in the gluten products um, creates a very inflammatory response. Hi, Paul. Um, so gluten creates kind of this low grade inflammatory response. It's not like you have a full blown illness, but it just irritates the system. And so that immune response um, is basically its body attacking, its, our bodies attacking their own cells, and that can cause damage and eventually lead to disease. So the one side of the coin is that inflammation in the body is the root of a lot of diseases. That's what the theory is these days. The second theory besides that gluten causes inflammation is that gluten can damage the gut. So um, their argument is that gluten enters the system and it really starts to um, kind of like pick away at the lining of the gut. You may have heard the term leaky gut. And that basically means the walls of the gut are damaged and then it becomes permeable so that nutrients can get in and out that shouldn't be getting in and out. The third is that grains and gluten um, create anti-nutrients, just nutrients that aren't good for us. So those are the three kind of main um, points of argument for the con side. Inflammation, gut damage, and that there's a lot of anti-nutrients that we're getting. Now, on the other side of the coin, the people who are sort of, I don't want to say pro-gluten, but they aren't against it, they're saying, wait a minute, the research really doesn't show that um, gluten is doing any of these things. So I follow um, Precision Nutrition a lot, and I will post the link to the gluten article that I used for today's Facebook Live post. Um, Precision Nutrition is a great company. They're very well respected, and um, they have looked at a lot of research, American research, and they say, hey, the research really isn't, um, it's not sound research. It's not good studies. There hasn't been enough of it. There weren't enough subjects, so the theories that are being come, are coming out of this um, research is just really not sound. We, we don't know enough yet to make a determination on whether gluten is doing all of these negative things. Um, the other side of the coin, so I also follow uh, Rob Wolf, who is one of the fathers of the paleo diet, and he comes from a different angle. So he is an evolutionary biologist, I believe, and his theory is, wait a minute, there's a lot of studies. They might not be from America, but there's a lot of stuff coming out of Europe that is showing, hey, gluten is inflammatory, there is gut damage, and it does create contain a lot of anti-nutrients. It's just that in America, our studies haven't been very sound. Um, so that's kind of the main toss up is what the research is saying, whether the research is quality research and where it's coming from. The people who are sort of pro-gluten are saying, wait a minute, disease itself is what's causing the inflammation in the body. So it's kind of like the chicken before the egg scenario is what we're eating causing inflammation and that's causing disease or is disease already present in the body and that's causing inflammation? So as you can see, it's kind of confusing. There's a lot of different moving parts and the moral of the story is that most of us really don't know at this point. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the main pro and con list for each side for the gluten argument. So whew, I have to take a break. It's a lot of information, I know. So tip number four, let's see. I'm looking at my notes. I wanna make sure that I didn't skip anything. Oh, so the other thing is the people who are pro-grain are saying, yeah, grains and gluten does, it does create, um, they do contain anti-nutrients, anti but almost every food 
that we eat contains some sort of anti-nutrient, but almost every food that we eat also contains good nutrients. So it's like a toss up. Do you throw out an entire um, classification of foods just because there's a few anti-nutrients that maybe um, like negative, negatively affect us or do the positive nutrients um, outweigh the negatives? That's a decision you have to make for yourself, right? Okay. Um, so tip number four, the fourth thing you should know about the gluten controversy is should you eat it? So like I said, most of the studies cited in America just haven't been conclusive about whether or not gluten actually is causing the effects that um, the researchers are saying. So for one example, Precision Nutrition points out that um, one study had only 67 participants. So a lot of the gluten um, like rigmarole that came out a few years ago was, was around one particular study that was released. The media got a hold of it. But that study only had 67 participants. And by the end of the study, only 44, no, 44 of the 67 had dropped out. So they only had results for whatever 44 minus 67 67 minus 44 is, right? So it wasn't really enough people um, to determine whether the theories were proven. Julie, what's an example of an anti-nutrient? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? I didn't write down any of the specifics. There's a whole bunch of them that have long names that I can't pronounce. Um, <laughs> so I will give you some examples and like why they are an anti-nutrient um, afterwards. Okay, I'll post it with this Facebook live post. Um, so, but basically it just means that in some way it negatively affects the body. Like it causes inflammation or it causes an immune response. Okay. So we are to, should you eat gluten? So we're still going through whether the research is actually good or not. Um, and the, the consensus is there is no consensus. So some of the research and studies that have come out are just either not enough people or they were released by people who aren't actually researchers who really have nothing to do with toxicology or environmental studies or biology. So, you know, the moral of that story is you have to really read um, who's releasing these facts and where the media is getting this information. So, should you be eating gluten? Now, there are people who actually are sensitive to, to gluten and it does cause a response. And you can be tested by a doctor or a nutritional therapist or a naturopath um, for gluten sensitivity. And the most extreme gluten sensitivity is celiac disease. And basically, if you are a person with celiac disease, Every time you ingest gluten, you have a, a huge immune response and it actually does damage the gut lining. It does cause leaky gut and that can be a really serious problem. You can't absorb nutrients properly. Bacteria is getting in and out. It's just no longer a um, solid wall in your gut like it should be. So that's celiac disease and that is the most um, serious of the gluten sensitivities and that can be tested for. On the other end of the spectrum are people who just have a sensitivity. And it's not like an allergy. It's not like if you eat it, you get like throat constriction or go into anaphylactic shock, nothing like that. Most people who have a sensitivity to gluten feel some of the symptoms that celiac patients feel, but they don't seem to have the damage to the gut lining. So the symptoms might include like bloatedness, um, diarrhea, but there's a lot of... Um, symptoms. It's like a whole gamut. It can be fatigue, depression, joint pain, um, just general pain and GI discomfort. So it's a really un a misunderstood or not well understood sensitivity at this point. Um, hi, Julie. It's okay that you missed part of it. You're here now. Um, so we have on one end of the spectrum, celiac disease, which is a very serious disease. And then we have a sort of all range of gluten sensitivities out there. And then people who might not be sensitive to gluten at all. And like, I think I said before, it's about 10 to 20% of the population they think has some form of gluten sensitivity. So, um, it's all really new. We don't know a lot about the gut and gut health. It's a brand new field. A lot of doctors and researchers going into it, but we are kind of in the learning phases right now. So you have to be the one to decide whether you're going to have gluten or not. You know, look for trusted 
people in the in the world around you and in the media who are giving information about it? Is it someone who is maybe connected to a university or a research institution? Is it somebody who is very well known for their background and the research that they've done on different food sensitivities? You know, Precision Nutrition is a really great resource for all kinds of topics. Rob Wolf is a really great um, resource on the other side. So, you know, look at all sides of the argument and then decide what works best for you. If you're feeling in general like you're having some of these symptoms in your life, the bloating, pain, like um, diarrhea, any of those things, pay attention to whether it happens after you're eating things that are wheat-based. Because if it is, then maybe you do have a sensitivity and then you can be tested for it. Um, the other thing you can try is just an elimination diet. So, you know, if you're eating the bread and bread products and things that have gluten in them now, take it out and see if you feel better, right? So because it's such a new field, a lot of it is very experimental and a lot of it is you listening to your body. So that was tip four is whether or not you should be eating it. And my answer is, I don't know. It depends on you. <laughs> um, so the fifth uh, thing that I want all people to know about the gluten controversy. And this was one that specifically I had a couple weeks ago, someone said to me, well, I thought all gluten-free foods were healthy. And that is a big no-no, right? So anything that comes in a package in the grocery store that has a label is not necessarily healthy. And I feel like gluten-free foods are taking the place of um, where fat-free and sugar-free foods used to be. So, you know, we don't, those are kind of out of style. We don't like fat-free and sugar-free foods anymore. And that's a whole different Facebook Live post about why I don't like those. So now gluten-free has kind of joined the, the uh, is the next step. So for example, um, I tend to stay gluten-free. I have been tested for it. I have a sensitivity, right? So I tend to stay away from gluten. Every once in a while, I really want cornbread. So I buy a gluten-free cornbread mix at Trader Joe's. Already done very rare and the reason why I buy it very rarely is because it has like over 20 I want to say over 25 grams of sugar per serving that's ridiculous that's like more than a candy bar that is probably as much as a piece of cake maybe more than ice cream some ice creams so just because it's gluten-free does not mean it's good for you and again that's because when they remove the part of the wheat that you know kind of holds it together they need to replace it with something else that's a binder and they need to make it taste good and that usually is going to mean that they're going to put extra salt in it extra sugar or extra fat so if you decide to go gluten-free, then you need to get your carbs from other places and ideally whole foods. So, you know, potatoes, rice, um, quinoa, uh, lentils, and other beans. So things that aren't packaged products, things that aren't going to be high in sugar, high in salt, high in fat, you need to look at those things on the labels um, of your gluten-free products if you're going to buy processed gluten-free products. So, you know, they, I mean, they make everything gluten-free now. And even things that are naturally gluten-free, it just says gluten-free on the front because they can do it. So, I mean, really it's up to you to be a responsible consumer and to know what you're buying and know that because they're taking out that gluten, um, they're going to be putting something else in. Uh, let's see. So, that's, so that's my biggest issue with the gluten-free stuff is that it's not necessarily the gluten that is the issue for a lot of people. And a lot of the experts are saying, if you're not sensitive to it, then there's no reason to remove wheat from your diet. Um, but it's the fact that the products that we're eating are crap, right? So it's not the fact that the wheat bread or the you know cake that you're eating has gluten in it. It's the fact that it's cake. That's the problem. So, you know, as always, I say, if you're not going to take out an entire food group, wheat products or gluten products, then um, you should still be sticking to a whole food diet that's minimally processed. Um, does anybody have any questions about any of that stuff? Because it was a lot. I did have one question. I'll wait to see if anyone um, writes one down. But I had one question from Linda Bogue, who wrote on my original Facebook announcement yesterday. She wanted to know, she said she heard that um, GMOs had more gluten than non-GMO products. And I couldn't find any information about that. 
Um, a lot of the information at the time I looked at it, which was like a year ago or, or so, wheat was not a GMO product yet, and I'm not sure if it is. I forgot to check. Maybe someone else knows if wheat currently is a GMO crop, but it wasn't at the time. Um, so the issue seems to be not the GMOs, but the fact that the kind of wheat, the strain or the variety that we're using these days has more gluten than the strain that we used to use many years ago. So, you know, again, we don't know, so much in our diet has changed and the processing of everything has changed over the last, you know, 20, 30, 40 years that I think we don't truly know what the issue is right now, except I truly believe it's just that people are not eating real food, right? So they're just not sticking close to the ground and the source. Um, okay. No one has any questions. I'm looking through my notes to see if I left anything else out. Those were my five facts. So I'm going to go over them one more time, just really quickly for the people who um, came in late. So number one was what gluten is, and it's the protein in the wheat that kind of makes it bind, that binds it together and makes it elastic. Um, the second thing that you needed to know about the, the gluten controversy was what was all the fuss about, and it's whether gluten is creating issues within our system like inflammation, gut damage, or not. And the third fact was we really don't know. <laughs> that Some re research says that it is. Some research says that it's not. You have to really listen to your body and get tested to find out if you are gluten sensitive or not um, according to your symptoms. Uh, the, fourth t the fourth point was should you be eating it? And again, some researchers say no, you shouldn't be eating, eating it at all. It causes inflammation. The other side of the argument says, you know, really, if you're not sensitive to it, it's really not an issue at all. How do you feel? And the fifth one was um, my issue is all gluten-free free foods are not healthy. So if you're going to buy something that's gluten-free from the grocery store, and if it comes in a box with a label, pay attention to the sugar in it, pay attention to the salt in it, and see if it's actually good. And if at all possible, if you're gonna go gluten-free, just avoid all that boxed stuff anyway. It's not real food. Stick to real healthy fruits, vegetables, lean proteins, um, whole unrefined grains, and things like potatoes and other starches. All right, that's it. So I'm going to thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope I answered a little bit of the questions about the gluten controversy. Um, I'll post this. This will be, even though I won't be live anymore, it'll be on my Facebook page so you can um, check it out again. There's a lot of information and then I'll also, you know, write some of the um, articles and the sources that I used uh, to go through both sides of the debate. All right. Thank you guys so much and I will see you next time. Bye.